Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Heather Carden and you are here at Ask Dr. Heather. This is a Facebook group where you can simply ask the question that you've been thinking about. Maybe there's something that's been confusing in the media or maybe a book that you read or maybe something that you heard, maybe overheard at work or in the grocery store line. And my goal is to actually help you understand that health or wellness question at a very simple level so you can actually maybe benefit from it or maybe you know it's not the right thing to do and help you move forward faster on your, your journey towards better. So uh, I've been, again, a little bit about myself. I've been practicing for over 20 years alongside my husband at Cardin Center for Wellness here in Overland Park, Kansas. I am the mother of four amazing young men, 16 and a half, I'm reminded, to 24. So I'm kind of been a little bit all over the place, kind of really trying to figure out how to help you guys better understand hormones, because I get a lot of questions about hormones. I did do a Facebook Live, which is on my YouTube channel, about thyroid. I did one specifically on adrenal glands. So today we're actually just gonna take things way back to the basics and to the top of things, which is called your cerebral cortex or your limbic brain. Because oftentimes we say that our body is like a three-legged stool when it comes to health. A three-legged stool, it has to have the mental emotional component, it has to have the chemical component and the physical component. All three of those things actually have to be in balance in order to make that chair or that stool balance. When any one of those things get out of balance, then things start to tend the other way or lean the other way. So say that you have a physical issue, then emotionally that can do a lot of things to you and start to tend you this way. Or maybe you broke your leg. Chemically, your body's go, got to have to go repair that. If you don't have the nutrients in your savings account or your bank account in your body or you're not eating them, then you might not repair as fast as you want. But today we're going to talk about the limbic system, which is the emotional Part of our brain that hippocampus so i have a diagram here that i will post later and people get confused when we say hormones they think hormones well that's just estrogen progesterone and testosterone it's much much more than that so back to the basics i'm a visual learner i know it's backwards but we eat healthy fats and then cholesterol again we've all been told cholesterol is the bad guy cholesterol is not the bad guy and it's okay if it can be higher 20 years ago a cholesterol level of 295 used to be normal, and then we lowered it down to 274, then 249, now 199. We keep lowering that, that cholesterol number when we look at that on lab work, but then yet we see all this hormonal imbalance happening. And hormones not being just estrogen, progesterone, but DHEA, pregnenolone, uh, the thyroid hormone. So lots of different hormones. So very simply, we eat healthy fats like cholesterol. It breaks it down to pregnenolone. DHEA is our anti-aging hormone. It can break down into our sex hormones, as you can see, either on both sides. So if we're eating a diet that maybe could be higher in estrogenic fats, then you could actually make more estrogen. You can eat fats that are higher in <clears throat> androgenic foods and it actually push it that way. For example, soy and dairy, things like that, like cheeses are a fat, they're more estrogenic, or things like anchovy, macadamia nuts, uh, sardines, those things are more androgenic or actually help make more healthy testosterone. But we do know that all carbs actually cause an estrogenic imbalance. They turn on an enzyme called aromatase, but we're not going to go there today. I don't know why even <clears throat> start there, but I just love that topic. So we're going to go back to hormones. So we have, um, we have what's called our cerebral cortex, which is our brain. So I like to use the releasing hormones and compare it to a light fixture. So if my light bulb goes out and you can see I've got a fan right up there, if that light bulb goes out or doesn't come on, I can think, wow, the light bulb's burned out, right? Or maybe the switch is off, or maybe I didn't pay my electric bill, or maybe the breaker box in the basement, maybe I threw a breaker off, or maybe somebody way down the corner had a wreck and actually hit the transformer. That's the same thing that can happen to your body. So I am gonna generally have a lot more female followers than male followers, but let me know where you're coming from. Let me know what your specific hormone question is. And maybe you don't wanna hear about hormones. Maybe you'd rather hear about detoxifications, but I have had a lot of questions about trying to explain how the emotional connection ties into the hormones. So it can be lots of different ways. So maybe you're an emotional eater and you go towards sweet things and, and things like that, like donuts and cakes and cookies and pies. Those sweeter foods, again, those carbohydrates, break down via aromatase and they actually help lead those healthy fats more towards that estrogenic nature. Or maybe you just crave dairy, it's one of those comfort foods. Well, dairy only comes from a girl cow. So that could mean it could sway the other way. So foods do have a lot to do with how our body makes it up, but our body is so, so smart. But again, let's just start talking about hormones because insulin is a hormone as well. So we start talking about the breaker box. So let's talk about the very bottom down here. The very bottom is gonads. So that could be ovaries or testes. And you can see that's where estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone are actually needed. So this would be like the light bulb right up above my ceiling. If that were out, then maybe I'd think, you know what, I just need to do some hormone replacement here. 
or maybe it is actually happening from the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands have lots to do with our epinephrine or norepinephrine, our fight or flight, or maybe it's the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary releases a lot of things. It's like our major switchboard, or this is like the panel in my basement. So this would be like the breaker box. So this would be, I need to do light bulb. This would be like the switch on the wall. Uh, this would be more like the breaker box, the adrenal glands, the anterior pituitary, the breaker box is down. And then the limbic system or emotional system would be somebody had a car wreck or hit the transformer pole down there. So what that would look like, say that if you actually um, were in a wreck and say, I was in a wreck, I'm going to use Lori since I saw your name or Aaron's name popped up here and we are, we are sisters and we're in a wreck. And let's say that Aaron has a very, very fatal injury or maybe a very severe injury. My body could go into shock. My blood pressure could drop as a, as a conservation mode. Um, my eyes could dilate or my blood pressure could go up. My body temperature could go down as again, just kind of a fight or flight or shock mode, even though nothing physically happened to me, something physically happened to Aaron. Sorry, Aaron, you're right next door to me. I'll use Mike next or your name was right there. So our body actually can use that emotional and it can cause a shutdown just as if the injuries were just as severe and someone was there. So when you start identifying where the imbalance is in your body, we have to think of our body like a roadmap. We get all the signals from our brain because if people are brain dead, we know that they don't have any more activity and the body can actually start to decompose or catabolize. So I'm just trying to use those nice words down there, but we have to have our brain alive in order to survive. We can have our lungs shut down and our brain still work and we can go on a bypass machine or our heart the same thing. We can be on bypass machine. Kidneys could stop working. You could be on dialysis. So other organ structures can can actually fail us, but we've got to have our brain going. And when we start getting those highway maps, again, think of it just like highway, the brain gives all these releasing signals. <clears throat> Again, we're talking mostly about that limbic system, that emotional system. So every time we have that spark, the emotional system actually gives rise to the releasing hormones from our pituitary and anterior pituitary. And this can even get injured like in severe concussions or in a car wreck or falling down the stairs when you're a little kid or running into walls, things like that. But that anterior releasing hormone is where we start to see, start to see a lot of pharmaceuticals. So say that you are taking an oral birth control. Oral birth control says, hey, do not release an, an egg. So the follicle stimulating the luteinizing hormone, so FHS and LHS, again, not too sciencey, is released from the anterior pituitary, so anterior pituitary and says, hey, ovaries don't release that egg, except the adrenal glands are still gone. Well, I make hormones, I help balance that out. And then the anterior pituitary says, well, I still have to release the thyroid stimulating hormone, my adrenal corticotropin hormone. So when you take something like that, that says shut off one process, how does it truly, again, this is a lot of pharmacokinetics, how does it truly just pick that one point? So this, again, is a little bit confusing, but I just wanted to let you know how important that emotional limbic system is, and then we start interfering with nature's process. So again, the limbic system is our emotional system. And if you've ever heard Mel talk about the 54321 rule, this is exactly what she's talking about. That emotional the limbic system can actually stop or almost paralyze us and we can switch it to our frontal lobe, which is our analytical lobe, then we can think things out. So maybe you're a person who just had someone, your dog just died. And, and if my dog died, I would think, okay, what's the process? What do we need to do? How are we gonna tell the kids? How are we gonna line things up? Where maybe my mom, I just start crying and start grieving and doing all that process where the analytical person's gonna start lining everything up and my mom's just gonna be in that, that moment of that heartfelt moment. So when you're trying to be your own health advocate and you're trying to really figure out your own journey towards better health, you, number one, have to figure out what type of brain am I? Am I a person who is more of an emotional brain? Am I more of an analytical brain? So if you're more of an analytical brain and you're on a diet and you know, I should not eat the donuts. I have to stop the donuts. I'm going to let myself have this or that, but I'm definitely going to stop the donuts. I'll go ahead and throw in the milkshakes in there. We'll just be over-exaggerating. So, you know, I'm going to go a month without uh, donuts or milkshakes. That's the analytical part. I'm not going to have it because one calorie equals 3,500. 500 calories. If I cut out the donuts, that's going to help me lose one pound. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. One pound equals 3,500 calories. So if I'm eating six donuts a day and one milkshake every single day, that's going to add up to X amount of calories. If I delete that amount of calories from my diet, then I'll actually start to lose weight. Or, but if you're an emotional person, I could tell you all the math in the world, how many calories, how many ounces something's worth. But if that emotional, that Pavlovian dog response, that emotional response says, but I'm really sad today because my dog died. I need to have the donut and it'll be okay because my dog's not going to die tomorrow. So I'm not going to worry about having the dog tomorrow or the donut tomorrow because today it happened. But when you go back to that behavior, whether it's exercise, 
exercising or overeating, undereating, putting yourself to bed, waking up at a healthy time, doing all those things, even keeping a gratitude attitude journal, you have to figure out, am I more of an analytical brain or more of an emotional brain? And when you can figure that out and you start mapping out how you want the year 2019 to be, then we know that you can actually start moving that forward faster. And if you can't figure that out, it's kind of like you're always on the get off ramp. You can't really figure out, you know, which way I need to go. And that happens a lot. And that's what we really do in our office as we start coaching people. Like, where do we start with? Again, a lot of people might just keep replacing this light bulb. The problem was never the light bulb. It's going to continue to burn out because their breaker box is broken or the pituitary. Again, somebody hit the transformer two blocks down or if I didn't pay my bill, it's never going to come on. That means my body's totally out of resources and it's not going to recover until it's replenished. So start taking, thinking about your health and those goals that you want and say, you know, what was the most original event? Was it, I didn't pay my bill or did my neighbor have a wreck or did my kids mess with the switch and toggled it too much and now it's not working? Sometimes you've got to just take a moment and say, what's really going on? And again, when we start to look at this huge, big graph, emotional system, anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary, that secretes, it tells our body, even in menopause, what to do, or, or andropause, I should say, but it also releases our growth hormone. So when we talk about doing a fast for 24 hours and men increase your human growth hormone or women increase your human growth hormone, that's great as long as the insulin factor, insulin growth-like factor, everything else is balanced out. Um, and same thing with the thyroid. So people are like, I didn't get the results I wanted. I heard somebody else do this and they got that results and why did this happen? And that's why I'm such an advocate of doing some intermittent fasting or doing some fasting or doing some rebooting, which we're getting ready to do and it's available today. So I'm going to use that word because I love it. It's rebooting because I'm not a computer person. I have trouble connecting the printer to the computer and I have to do this. Is it my printer, my computer, do I not have the cord plugged in, do I not have the right one? The same thing needs to be true for you when you start really looking at your body and you can't put all that responsibility on your doctor. They should guide you in the right direction, but kind of have, uh, kind of know what your personality is like and that will actually really help you move further faster and that's really what it's about. How fast can we move to get to our ideal? weight? How fast can we move to lower our blood pressure? How fast can we move forward to anti-age ourselves? We know that it takes a certain amount of time just to replicate and turn over all of our new blood work. But again, we talk about the anterior pituitary. It releases our human growth hormone, which actually stimulates our insulin-like growth hormone. So that's about the whole body, insulin resistance, insulin manufacturing, also controls our thyroid stimulating hormone, pituitary TSH. We talk about all the time being the engine for the body, but the thyroid gland itself makes T3 and T4. It's not the pituitary. Pituitary just tells it, hey, release that hormone. Then we also know our pituitary tells our adrenal glands, which are little glands that sit on top of our kidneys. They are the engine for our body. They help control our glucocorticotropin hormones. Big word, but if you've over-sugared, over-carbed, what it does is it helps control our, our natural anti-inflammatory because our body can make antihistamine-like compounds. It can control inflammation, but if it's been overused from too many carbohydrates and not enough resources like healthy fats, then it's not going to work very well. The adrenal glands, again, which are the engine, also help control some very specific sex hormones like cortisol, which helps uh, create our natural circadian rhythm. Also DHEA, which is our anti-aging hormone, and then also aldosterone, which is a big player in longevity. Our adrenal guns also are fight or flights. We talk about being in a car wreck and having Aaron next to me. What happens is that fight or flight response is either going to go up or go down. We know when we have carbohydrates, our insulin, our glucose starts to rise and our body says, oh my gosh, glucose, that's like a toxin. We don't want that. That's an enemy. Insulin, go grab that glucose, get it and put it somewhere. So what's our body do if we don't use it? It puts it in a storage of a fat cell. Then the blood sugar starts to come back down. Dopamine, which is our feel-good hormone, said, boy, I like when I had that sugar. I felt really good, even though glucose is toxic. And then that epinephrine, norepinephrine, just starts to go up and down and up and down. So that fight or flight mode. So if you're easily agitated, dizziness and vertigo, absolutely uh, you know, easily agitated, maybe trouble falling asleep. Once you get asleep, trouble staying asleep, trouble getting up, trouble having your blood sugar balance, that hypoglycemia reaction. That's not because you're a lack of carbohydrates. Hydrates. It's because that body's in out of balance with the hormones. Hormones, again, are manufactured from healthy fats. 
the adrenal glands also help control our blood pressure. So people say, I have, oh, I have low blood pressure, that's normal. Not really, because low blood pressure means that if you go from sitting to standing, your body can't pump up the volume, so to speak, which means the volume of blood and everything else to your head and to your heart. So if you stand up too quickly, you do a burpee, you do a down dog, you jump out of bed when the baby cries or the dog wants out and you feel kind of dizzy or vertigo, that can be called orthostatic hypertension. If your blood pressure drops when you're, when you're laying down or sitting and if you stand up and your blood pressure drops, it's called orthostatic hypertension. That's also controlled through our adrenal glands. So if you have an emotional response up in your brain, the adrenal corticotropin hormone, which tells the engine of your body, your adrenal glands, what to do, gets paralyzed because it's in shock, those things won't start to roll. I know it's a lot of science today. That's why I'm thinking, okay, which way do I educate? How do I help people with the hormone question? So we see that there's a lot going on with hormones, but the most important thing we see today is that emotional state. So there's a lot of articles you guys can Google like sleep and gratitude. So maybe you've had the absolute worst day. Maybe you don't like your job at all. You're having trouble with your relationships from your spouse to your neighbors, to your children, to your relatives that don't live with you. You have all these things that aren't really going your way. But what studies show is that if you take five minutes at night and do some gratitude, say, you know what, I'm lucky I have have heat. I'm lucky I have electricity. I'm lucky I had clean water to drink. Think of simple things. I didn't run out of toothpaste today. My car didn't break down to me. If you put those little gratitude things in the bank of your brain before you go to sleep, because when we sleep is when that cortisol, that thyroid gets to calm down, the adrenal glands get to rest and restore. Even that, that's something you can control. You can't control if your neighbor's dog comes over in your yard. You can't control if the somebody's fighting down the street. You can't control if your kids don't do as great as you want to on a test or maybe work again. There's some things you just can't control. It's a zero degrees today in Kansas. You can't control that. And boy, that's throwing a lot of thyroids out of balance because we're living in a 70 degree environment. My body's trying to be 98. It is zero outside. And then Saturday, it's going to be 65 here in Kansas. It throws a whole bunch of stuff. So we can't control the weather and that type of thing. We start controlling that limbic system. That's why I'm really focusing on self-care in 2019. Self-care, that means get your skin checked, get your, get your body checked, get a good blood pressure, uh, see what your cholesterol is, check those things out. Because oftentimes people don't do anything until they start getting signs and symptoms. And what happens is there's an amazing spot where your body has what's called an optimal level. So everything's functioned optimally. Let's call it, let's talk about magnesium. Magnesium optimally should be 2.2 to 2.6. Now when you go to the doctor and get it drawn, they're gonna say, oh, we don't worry till it gets below 1.5 or 1.2. Six. What happens is once magnesium gets that low, anxiety, agitation, noise, and sound, your body can be getting cramps, you can get in constipation because the bowels won't release, you can be getting a sensitivity to noise and sound, um, it actually can even affect the thyroid from starting or stopping, so a lot of those things can happen. So we look at those optimal levels, we start saying, let's be self-care, let's go ahead and get a good blood, blood work done because blood doesn't lie, it tells you what's happening, you don't feel high liver enzymes usually, you don't feel higher low calcium, you don't feel high cholesterol, right? Those things you didn't notice, but they're super important of what's going on. So those things, I am gonna be an advocate, go get those things checked out. But then again, I want you really just maybe take a month. I know a lot of people are doing dry January, which is no alcohol in January. So high five, big congrats to you. Also big shout out to the people we have for participating in our 20 day keto kickstart. And a big congrats to everyone who just completed a 60 hour reboot. So there were there are tens of thousands of people who finished their 60 hour reboot today. If that was you, put down a thumbs up because big congrats to you. And we're getting ready to do another one on February 10th so that it helps reset your body and clean everything out. Those things you can control on. Then I'm gonna roll. So we're gonna talk more about attitude and what that can do. And that's for you to find out simply journaling. Maybe ask your coworkers, maybe ask your spouse or your kids like, what would the word be that you use to describe me? Maybe you would say, oh, they should say I'm happy, I'm awesome. Maybe they go, well, she's kind of crabby or she's got a short fuse or you know those words because you never know how you're coming across as someone else, but those things, not to shame or to blame or sabotage, but actually to help you grow as a person. And I uh, heard a, one of Dr. Dom's, Dominic D'Agostino talking about longevity and how do we live to be 120. He thinks having your mind in the right spots almost the most important thing. And I know why he says that because when we look at the top of the brain chain and these are all the hormones and how the hormones circulate in our body limbic system emotional brain how you set your brain how you set those intentions every day and you know we talk about 
overcoming things. It actually starts right there with that. And with that being said, I'm going to talk a little bit about detoxing because again, we can detox our brain from unhealthy relationships, maybe unhealthy situations, but just start by detoxing by not watching violent shows, maybe not using negative things to describe yourself or other ones. Those things are things we can absolutely do. So, um, that's one homework we have. And then the detox question in the reboot, because we had tens of thousands of people like, what is the reboot? Why are we doing that? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's an amazing thing. So if you were a female, I like analogies. If you were a female between 25 and 45, you should be having a cycle every month. If your cycle didn't show up, you're like, whoa, what happened? Right. And you know, you're not pregnant. Something's out of balance. What happens if the moon cycles every 28 days? What happens if the moon didn't cycle? We had no waning moon. We had no full moon. Boy, that would throw a lot of things out of balance. Tides of the water and fishes and animals and the way the earth grows. Well, the same thing can happen. Our bodies are meant to actually turn over and detoxify every 28 days. We go through a process called sulfonification and hydroxylation, where our body actually make things in, in, um, water soluble compounds, our body can excrete that out. What facilitates that is lots of lean, greasy vegetables, um, healthy meats, but the more toxins we're exposed to, the harder it makes our body to do that. And then we don't give our body a break, like a 60 hour break, then it can't get all those toxins out. So again, tens of thousands of people we've been coaching to do the keto reboot. And what that does is you actually just take some amazing blend of different nutrients, different amino acids, different uh, calcium, magnesium, zinc, beta hydroxybutyrate for energy to help protect your lean muscle mass. And then that 60 hours is over, then you really start to identify, I'm going to eat when I'm hungry. I'm going to stop when I'm full. And then when you want to refeed, because when you're not consuming large volumes of food, something over 300 calories for um, 48 hours, your blood sugar resets and recycles through. At 72 hours, your body starts to make new white blood cells. Well, it has to make it from nutrition things. So once you come out of that 60 hour reboot, or if you're doing a 72 hour fast, then what happens is when you refeed, you want to be healthy greens and fishes and really healthy plant oils, because that will help reestablish and rebuild that whole cascade of hormones. You guys can find this on Google. Just look at cholesterols and fats. You can find this just anywhere, cholesterol and hormones. You're going to see what affects it up here. Besides emotional, number one thing is stress handling. So again, you can clean all that body out, but then we've also got to help eliminate stress. When our hormones are balanced, we know we're less likely to overeat. If our hormones are balanced, our epinephrine, our cortisol is balanced out, we're going to sleep better, we're going to recover better, and we're going to handle the day-to-day normal stress that we cannot control much better. Like if your car breaks, breaks down or you get fired from the job or your printer doesn't work. Those things you're going to handle much better. It's going to be less of a less of a shock or shock to your body. The second thing is energy production. We hear all the time we talk about ketones being an amazing energy source. And I'm going to go right back to this source right here. So what we do know, and this is coming from pure science, amazing educators around the globe, that as we start to age, and I am over the age of 50, so um, a lot of my my, uh, family have lived to be 97, 98, my great-grandmother 100, my um, great-aunt 100, my uh, grandpa was 97, he fell down the stairs and bruised a kidney, he was still bowling and golfing, my grandma passed away at 96 or 7, she choked on a chicken bone, so a lot of longevity on my dad's side of the family. Not true on my mom's side, but my dad's side of the family. So if I'm 50 something, I'm probably through half my life right now. But what we know is as the brain starts to age, the sugar that actually would feed the brain starts to deteriorate. The transport system, the highway, so to speak, doesn't work as efficiently as it should. It actually starts to slow down and sometimes even reject uptaking that fuel from glucose, which we get from carbohydrates. But we know that as we age, ketones can bypass that whole metabolic pathway and go right to the brain and start feeding and signaling everything else. That's why it's so important when you come out of something like a reboot or a 24-hour fast or a modified fast or a fat fast that you actually refeed those cells healthy. I generally talk about it like going to the dentist because I've got four kids and you know, you go twice a year. It's a lot of kids brushing their teeth, things like that. So they go to the dentist, the dentist says, oh, you've got some tartar, you haven't been flossing. What happens? They come home from from the dentist, they start cleaning better, their oral hygiene is better, they're not eating sugary stuff, they're actually flossing. And then a month goes by and then two months go by and then they forget to floss every day and then they kind of floss every week and then they forgot about eating, not eating sugar and they're back to eating sugar and then they forgot to brush twice a day now it's only once a day. The same things happen through our body throughout time if we don't metabolically reset every 28 days and give our body that time. There's a lot lot of leading researchers out there. I mean, our body was meant to be like a caveman where if my 
my, my husband couldn't get that squirrel in the yard today. My four kids didn't eat today. If he gets it tomorrow, then we'll eat tomorrow, just not today. Or we could go dig up the yard where the squirrel is uh, um, digging up the walnuts because the snow is gone today. The squirrel's out there digging up all the walnuts and stuff, so it's fun to watch. But that's real life. I know we're not squirrels, but the same thing happens. Uh, the squirrel doesn't have a 24-hour drive through And yesterday, there was snow on the ground, so we definitely couldn't get to what his food was. But what I'm getting is our body's meant to be metabolically flexible. We have actually caused the adaptation with 24 hour drive throughs 24 hour grocery stores, you know, eating six mini meals a day or driving through just because or eating just because we're happy or sad or lonely or bored. We know that food is meant to be fuel for our bodies. We talk about that fuel source and how it can be in that longevity component. It absolutely has to do with getting rid of the processed foods, getting rid of the snacking, eating in an eight to nine hour window and doing the very best that you can. So um, I did travel the last couple of days. I know some people ask about travel. So we were, I had two appointments in a hospital out in Denver and we went to the cafeteria. We bypassed lasagna, bypassed the food bar. I was hoping for soup, but the soup was all noodly beanie stuff. So we def definitely went to the salad bar. So there definitely is options. It was probably not organic spinach. Uh, the chicken probably was not organic. However, I did pick the best choice that I had. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. It wasn't Mediterranean greens. It wasn't kelp. Again, the spinach probably wasn't organic, but it was certainly a better choice than picking the stuffed potato or the pasta bar or the pizza. And I could have said, you know what? It's just one day. Let's do it. Doesn't matter. The minute you have that one meal or you have that one drink of something, whether it's a soda, an alcohol, sweet tea, sports drink, whatever it is, what happens is all those cells that you're making at that time are getting flooded with all that stuff you're feeding. It's not just like I ate it in five minutes and forgot about it. Your cells are still processing all that, trying to figure out what the heck to do with red dye number 30, what the heck to do with a uh, monosodium gluteate. It doesn't know what to do with that stuff. So in order to help our body facilitate an anti-age, again, we're on this self-care of 2019, moving forward faster, what do we do? We start actually doing those small little things that add up to big, big changes. So I think I share with you guys, uh, I saw a friend of mine, Christine, who is a family practice doctor, and I had had this little spot on my head. I've been putting tea tree oil on it for several months and some silver and not wearing makeup. And she said, you ought to have that checked out. So I did go to a dermatologist, which I think everyone should go to. Um, there are no rules anymore when it comes to skin cancer. Two out of three women will get some form of cancer. One out of two men will get some form of cancer. Cancer is on site by growth out of balance, stress out of balance, all this stuff can happen. So I went to have this little spot checked. He's like, that's a wisdom spot. I guess that means old age, but that's a wisdom spot. But he did find a spot on my back and um, you know, it ended up being skin cancer. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not very shocked. It's kind of an identity crisis for me because again, I've never had a cigarette. I try to leave a healthy life. However, I do have four kids. I have a busy practice. I sunburned all the time when I was a kid. My mom used to make me wear a t-shirt at the pool and I'd take it off because I think people were judging me wearing a t-shirt. My sister and I would lay on top of the pole barn and we would get lard because we butchered our own animals. We had that big old tub of lard, the red tarps. So if you guys have ever butchered animals, you know, you always get the tub of lard to cook with. And so we would lather ourselves with lard and get as tan as we could be. Um, I'm an 80s gal, high school and college in the 80s. I worked in a tanning booth. So I worked in a pharmacy during the day and then I went and helped close a tanning booth in our small town. I'd lay in the tanning booth every night. So in the 80s, 80s, 80s. So I'm not super surprised that I had a spot of skin cancer, but I do want to really, uh, really share with you, get that stuff checked out. There's no more rules anymore. Even the dermatologist who is also a microbiologist and pathologist, he goes, I was really surprised that came back. You know, so you just never know. So get those things done. Again, just like blood work, you never know if something's out of balance. I had three people's lab that did last week and they came back diabetic, not moderately, but diabetic. And a teenager and an elderly lady who thought her hormones, not elderly, around my age, thought her hormones were out of balance, ended up being diabetes. So again, you never know until you have things checked out. So I do encourage you to do those self-care things. Check out your vitamin D. It should be 60 to 80. Some new uh, four fingers are thinking, you know, for women, it should be up to 100 um, I use or nanograms over deciliters. But the lab says, oh, anything over 30 is fine. We know optimally for heart disease and cancer, it should be 60 to 80. And mine is actually in the normal range. So again, I think it's just years of having my back sunburned and things like that. So again, got it taken care of, all good to go. Moving forward, what do I do? identify is there excess stress in my life how do i reduce that stress so i do feed myself my own medicine and when things like this happen i think it's kind of an identity crisis but i want to be real and be authentic with you and say you know what i had something that showed up so and again i encourage you to go have it checked out because i was having a spot on my head checked out and it ended up being a spot on my back and so even again the dermatologist didn't know until you looked at the pathology so get those things checked out i think it's great to um to really, if you think you're fighting some type of hypertension, you know that you exercise every day, or maybe you have a lot of stress, 
check that out. What we do know is that your blood pressure should be not 120 over 80 if you are 65 years old or if you're 50 years old. We know as you age, because we wouldn't think the strength of a 20 year old is the same as the strength of a 60 year old, we do know that those numbers actually get to increase. You can check it out in the medical books. So 120 over 80 for someone who is a young, healthy, average person in their 20s, early 30s. And then as you get to age 60, it should be 145 over 90. And then you get a half a point for every number over that. So if you're 95 years old, your blood pressure should not be 120 over 80. Oftentimes I see people over medicated for their blood pressure and then their pulse drops. Well, when their pulse drops, they become a fall risk, they're unsteady, vertigo, dizziness, all those type of things. So just know that when you start becoming your own advocate, look at the one thing that really is bothering you with your health. Like what is it really that I think I need to have checked out? If you haven't had a colonoscopy or even just done a nice fast for a while, see what's happening. Why would you do that? Well, maybe you're not having regular bowels. Maybe you have extensive gas and bloating and you know you're eating clean. If you're having a sense of IBS issues or irritable bowel or GERD, I would say do a reboot, balance out the digestive issues, let the body rest for a good 60 plus hours, take out all the toxins, and again, just get the pipes cleaned out, so to speak, and then reintroduce healthy, clean foods, and then see what happens, because your body turns over pretty quickly. Your bowel should be eliminated once or twice a day, even though there's feet in there. We know that the, the Ig antibodies will turn over, IgG will turn over probably every 72 to 96 hours, the E's will turn over every, mm, 15 to 20 minutes. So you'll find pretty quickly when you do something like a metabolic reboot and then you reestablish those healthy foods in there and things like healthy plants like chia seeds and things like that, you're going to discover what a sensitivity could be doing. And what happens is over time, those start to become different types of symptoms. So pick the one thing, and I can't wait for you guys to share with me. I've been a little windier. Pick the one thing that maybe you need to know more about. Maybe you think your hormones are out of balance. Maybe you're having hot flashes. Maybe you're male and you're prematurely graying and saying, you know, everybody else is graying. Well, I'm going to use, I'm going to close with one stat that I heard from Dr. Jason Fung. In 1950s and 60s, we really didn't have type 2 diabetes. And I hear people say, well, my whole family has type 2 diabetes. I'm going to have type 2 diabetes. That could be true if you all ate the same meals from the age of 10 to 20. You all had oatmeal and banana for breakfast. You all had grilled cheese and and a macaroni and cheese for lunch, and you all had hamburgers and fries and potatoes for dinner. So if you all ate healthy starchy carbs and had juice and drinks like that at every single meal, yes, you're more likely to have type two diabetes. In 1950s and 60s, we really didn't have it. So what we do know is that type two diabetes is not inherited. It is not genetic. There might be 1%, but according to Jason Fung, it's not hereditary. It is self-induced to environmental disease. The great news is you can actually reverse that. We know now there's no essential carbohydrates. You need insulin when you're digesting carbohydrates and healthy protein. So you simply just start reducing your carbohydrates. Just start cutting stuff out and see what happens to your body. This is an amazing stat. If you drink one sugary drink a day, that could be a juice. Even if you juice yourself and you do beets and apples or an ABC juice, or you have one sports drink, or you have one soda, one sweet tea, a uh, frappuccino latte that's 400 calories. We learned about those, we went up to a Starbucks and Caribou and started looking online and seeing how much sugar was in their, in their products. If you're having one of those sugary drinks a day, 85% chance you're gonna have type two diabetes. And if you have type two diabetes, you have an 85% chance of having Alzheimer's as we start to age. So just stop to think about that. How much is that one soda sweet tea sports drink worth to me? Or we see our kids, well, they're skinny, they're fine, they're just growing, that's the metabolism. They're actually the fastest growing age of type two diabetes is actually kids in their, in their late teens and early 20s. So we definitely need to get that to switch around. So I love, Kaz says, um, my hot flashes are driving me crazy. So hot flashes, super, super easy, Kaz. Make sure you're drinking at least half your body's weight in water. Make sure you're having no starchy sugary carbs after six o'clock or really after five o'clock. So if you're drinking some sugar throughout the day, stop, start with those two things, no caffeine after two o'clock. Hit me back in three days and tell me what's better. I, lo I love, love being a detective about this because sometimes it can be very easy. Add more water to your body, right? Drink, drink, drink so the hot flashes come down because the hot flash can either be your thyroid trying to stop or start. It can be your body trying to burn off excess sugar. That's why we say shut out the sugar at night, right? Or if you work a swing shift, it can also be your cortisol out of rhythm. So just do those simple little things. Cut the caffeine out after like two because that's your adrenal time. Don't have that. Um, don't know sugary drinks after four or five o'clock. So no potatoes, no juices, no glass of wine. Just have a nice big salad with some healthy meat. Have a big stir fry, a big soup, grill a kebab, things like that with some cauliflower rice. 
and then make sure you're drinking at least half your body's weight in water. So Kaz, hit me back in two or three days. If that doesn't work, then let's be more of a detective, but that can work for a lot of people. And that recipe can work for a lot of things like anxiety, hypertension, insomnia, allergies. That little recipe will go a really long way for all you that stayed on here. You have probably got a big bang for your buck there and say, gosh, that seems so easy. And I've been suffering with this for a long time. And even if it helps 20 or 30%, that's still a win in my book because now we know we're on the right track. Don't expect everything to be 100%. So if you say, well, this helped this much, this helped this much. Um, and then I will share more of my story tomorrow. I know a lot of you for following my story about my RSD or CRPA, um, chronic regional pain syndrome, and went out to a doctor. So I'll share more about that and what's kind of helped. Um, so Cass says, I don't drink any sugary drinks, but I don't drink enough water. Awesome. Take a Epsom salt bath tonight. If you have a six foot tub, do a half an ounce or a half a cup of um, Epsom salt. If you have one of those big spa tubs, you could probably do three quarters to a full cup of Epsom salt. Your skin is your largest organ. It will help balance out your pH. It will also help hydrate your body. So get the water in. Let's see if that calms that down. If your body's trying to sweat or have that hot flash in order to say, hey, drink more. It's trying to tell you to drink more. The easier thing to do is stick out your tongue. And I'll put a tongue chart down here. If you have little crinkles alongside of your tongue, like where you're, oh, that's my teeth mark your body's dehydrated. Or if you pinch your skin in the winter, it doesn't snap right back. This has nothing to do with age. When you snap it, it should go right back. That means you're hydrated. If it snaps and you go one 1,000 and it goes down, dehydrated. Again, tongue is a great way. Dry eyes, if you can't, if you can't like, animals. How are the animals dehydrated? If they have no tear production. So dry eyes can be a sign of just not enough you know, not drinking enough water or crusties in the morning in your nose cannot be drinking enough water. So now these are really easy things. Kaz, only have a shower. So go ahead, take a longer shower, maybe put your feet in a trash can if you've got a, a 13 gallon trash can and just get your feet and body, start soaking up some Epsom salt. So a fourth a cup in a nice big trash can and put that for 20 minutes in front of a TV show. It still metabolically helps get your body hydrated. Also putting some pinches of sea salt in your water will help your, you know, the water that you drink will also help your body be hydrated. So thank you for sharing that. I love when somebody's willing to actually put that out there forward. So you guys have an amazing, amazing day. We'll talk about detox more this week. We're and talk more a little bit more about hormones based on the questions I get over the next couple hours again please feel free to share this my name is Heather Carton you are here at Ask Dr. Heather um, if you are brand new you can actually get an amazing guide to, to start your day in the right way just go over to askdrheather.net download your guide to start your day in the right way and we are getting ready to reboot this uh, February 10th so those kits are available now for the next about 48 hours they have sold out before. We had about 70 some thousand people participate and just finished today. So it is an amazing opportunity to upgrade your health, reboot your health, start the year of 2019 right. Um, and I look forward to hearing each, from each and every one of you what your concerns are, what your questions are, and you guys just have a blessed day. We'll see you soon.